Okay, so this stuff about changing order of integration in the last couple of lecture segments was a bit tough. So let's take a break and do something which is fun and a little easier. So let's say I have a solid region with a function rho on it, which always takes positive values, and you can think of this as a mass density. So I have some solid, um, but its mass density varies in different points. Like you could imagine your body has different parts, like bones or fat or muscle, and those have um, different densities. Okay, and you want to know what is the total mass and what is the center of mass of the solid. So the total mass capital M is the triple integral over E of the mass density with respect to volume. Why is that? Well, I could think of the mass density um, as you take a small box in your region a volume delta v, um, and let's take the limit as delta v goes to zero, and let's say this box has some mass delta m, and you divide it by its volume, okay? So we have a small box of volume delta v and mass delta m, okay? Now if you want to find the total mass, well, you can approximate it by cutting your region into a bunch of small boxes. Uh, don't try this with a human body. Anyway, you cut it into a bunch of small boxes and you sum up the mass of the boxes. And the mass of the box is the mass density times the volume. So the mass of the box, well, this is only an approximation because the box might have a slightly varying mass density, but it's um, going to be rho times delta v. Okay, and then you're adding up rho times delta v over all of these boxes, and that just means that you're integrating rho with respect to volume. Okay, now we can also find the center of mass. So this is the point x bar, y bar, z bar, where x bar is the weighted average of x. So it's 1 over the total mass times the integral over the region of x times the mass density times the volume. This is the weighted average of x. And likewise, uh, y bar equals 1 over m triple integral over e of y rho dv and z bar equals 1 over m triple integral over e of z times rho times dv. Okay, so the meaning of the center of mass is, well, if you want to balance the object on the tip of your finger, then the center of mass needs to be directly above the tip of your finger. Or if you throw the object across the room, then ignoring friction, it will move as if the center of mass were moving in a nice parabola. The, the object might rotate, but the center of mass will move in a nice parabola. Okay, so let's calculate an example of the center of mass. So example, so E will be a cube of side length A. So it's the interval 0A cross the interval 0A cross the interval 0A. And let's take the mass density to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And let's calculate the center of mass. Okay, now before we even calculate anything, we can notice that this problem is perfectly symmetric if we change the roles of the variables x, y, and z. So by symmetry, the center of mass is going to have to have the form 
c, 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 where c is some constant. And what is c? Who knows? So is you might guess that it's a over 2, so maybe, maybe it's right in the middle, or maybe it's bigger, or maybe it's smaller. You could say, does c depend on a? Um, well, sure, it depends on a, but um, does c over a, um, is c over a a constant? So does this depend on a? Um, all right. Well, who knows? We're going to have to work it out. So first, let's find the total mass. So m equals the triple integral. So I can just integrate from 0 to a, from 0 to a, and 0 to a, because this is a rectangle. And then I have x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Let's say dz, dy, dx. OK. And let's do the z integral. So x squared and y squared are like constants. So I have x squared z plus y squared z plus z cubed over 3 evaluated at z equals a and z equals 0, and then dy dx. And when I do this evaluation, so I get x squared times a, or I'll write this as ax squared, and then y squared times a, I'll write this as ay squared, and then the z cubed over 3 gives me a cubed over 3, and the z equals 0 terms will give me 0. OK, now I have to do the y integral. So x is like a constant here. So this is ax squared y plus a y cubed over 3 plus a cubed y over 3, evaluated at a and 0, um, dx. So this is the integral from 0 to a. So when y equals a, I get a squared x squared. And then here I'm going to get a to the fourth over 3. And here I'm going to get another a to the fourth over 3. So I have 2 a to the fourth over 3. And now I integrate over x. And so what is this? So this is a squared x cubed over 3 plus 2a to the fourth x over 3 evaluated at x equals a and x equals 0. So the x equals 0 gives me nothing. And so I get, um, here I'm going to get a to the fifth over 3, and here I'm going to get 2a to the fifth over, over 3. So the final answer for the total mass is a to the fifth. OK, now we can calculate x bar. So x bar is 1 over the total mass, integral from 0 to a, integral from 0 to a, integral from 0 to a of x. So this is what we're averaging. And then we have to put in the weighting by the mass density. So x times x squared plus y squared plus c squared. And then we can integrate in any order we like. Um, so let's say d z dy dx. Um, and m is a to the fifth. So we have 1 over a to the fifth. And let's do the z integral. So here I have an x cubed, so that's going to give me x cubed z, because x is like a constant. Here I have xy squared, so that's going to give me xy squared z. And here I have x d squared, so that will give me x z cubed over 3. Evaluate it at z equals a and z equals 0, and then dy dx. So this is kind of a long calculation, but it's, it's easy. There's nothing tricky we have to do here. OK, so I plug in z equals a. The z equals 0, of course, is going to give me nothing. So the z equals a gives me um, ax cubed 
plus AXY squared plus A cubed over 3 times X. And now I integrate over Y and then over X. Okay, so I have 1 over A to the fifth integral from 0 to A. And the Y integral, so I have AX cubed Y plus AXY cubed over 3 plus a cubed over 3xy, evaluate it at y equals a and y equals 0. So this is 1 over a to the fifth, integral from 0 to a. So I plug in y equals a, and I get a squared x cubed plus um, a to the fourth over 3 times x plus another a to the fourth over three times x. So let's just put a two there. And I have to integrate this over x. All right, so let's do that. So this is one over a to the fifth. Um, and then the a squared x cubed gives me an a squared x to the fourth over four and the 2 a to the 4th over 3x gives me an a to the 4th over 3x squared. And I evaluate at x equals a and x equals 0. And the x equals 0 is going to give me 0, so I just need to plug in x equals a. So I get 1 over a to the 5th times a to the 6th over 4 plus a to the 6th over 3. So this is a times a fourth plus a third. So this is a fourth plus a third times a. And if I remember how to add fractions, that's 7 twelfths a. So that's x bar. And my symmetry, y bar equals z bar. So I conclude that the center of mass is x bar, y bar, z bar equals 7 twelfths a, 7 twelfths a, 7 twelfths a. All right, so let's do a reality check and think about what this is saying. So this is not quite the center of the cube. It's a little bit off from the center. So the because 7 twelfths is a little bit bigger than a half. And let's think if that makes sense. So let's go back to the beginning here. So here, the mass density is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now, if the mass density were constant, then we would expect the center of mass to be the center of symmetry. However, this mass density gets bigger as you go away from the origin. So it actually makes a lot of sense that the center of mass is um, has x bar, y bar, and t bar bigger than a over 2. So these first, these first um, two possibilities don't happen, and we actually see this, which we should have we should have realized if we had thought about this, uh, maybe you realized that. Um, and then, does c over a depend on a? And the answer is no. It's seven twelfths. So that's that's maybe a little less obvious, but that's what we saw from the calculation. Okay, so that's a that's a fun application of triple integrals.